Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last few episodes, I've been getting our computer and circuit factory up and running, which I've been calling Circuit City. It's now making about 12 and a half computers per minute, and to do this, I retrofitted the screw factory we built many episodes ago with a new recipe, and then built a makeshift cable factory right next to it to send all of the goods needed via rail into Circuit City. Now, today, the final piece of the puzzle to making the next tier and getting the space elevator launched is making the dreaded heavy modular frames so I can make the adaptive control units. So, I'm going to be pushing towards that, but not quite building a dedicated heavy modular frame factory just yet. Instead, we're going to feed a manufacturer manually and let that kind of do its thing in the background while we sort of build a new hybrid truck and train station to help smoothen out the logistics that I was kind of doing in the previous episode and just make things look a little bit better too. All right, our train has actually just arrived right on time. What do we got in it? We got some quick wire, plastic, screws, a little bit of cable there on the end. So we're in Circuit City right now on the train station floor. And we have our to-do list on the right-hand side of the screen as per usual. The first thing, of course, is going to be to balance Circuit City. It's running at a deficit, if you want to call it that. We're actually short on the raw materials to even power on all of the machines we have. It's not the biggest factory, really, and it still can't even run everything just yet. I've got a lot of work to do. The next one is going to be the switching on heavy modular frames. Down back at the kind of main base area. Building a large truck and train station which is going to take the bulk of the time. And then switching on the adaptive control unit. So here we are in the main facility. No real changes have been going on. But we have A, B, C, D and E all powered on. But if you take a quick look, we got some yellow lights flickering. That's because we're not quite making enough of... A bunch of different things. It actually looks like the screws are flowing in slowly, but so is the plastic. Alright, so, I had a look at this and why this was happening. I actually decided to overclock every single assembler just a little bit. They're all overclocked to the same amount, 120%, producing 10.5 per minute. And that was in order to satiate the demand of the five manufacturers here, which require circuit boards. That wasn't really the root of the problem, though, of course. Increasing, overclocking all of the assemblers means there's an increased demand on plastic and an increased demand on quick wire, both of which, unfortunately, we don't actually make enough of. So, if we just head back out to the manufacturers, we can sort of look at the amounts that we can sustain and see what we need to do. So, currently, we're taking in 45 plastic per minute. So, in my plastic factory, which is basically just out that window out there, if you remember, we built on and we have to flush that, that heavy oil residue buffer every now and then. Still have to get to that. There's another to-do list thing <laughs> that we got to... Just one of the many things I got to catch up on. Anyways, we're making about 400 plastic over there while the building is running. This So this takes 45, so we'll go 45 times 5 as there's 5 manufacturers. That's 225. Now, let's just have a quick look at how much plastic is needed in the assemblers. We needed 15 per minute while it's being overclocked. So let's just go, we can actually do it in the same thing. 45 times 5, right, was that 225? Plus, now we're going to do 12 times, what was it, 15, right? Oops. So that, that comes to 405 plastic is the demand of this building. Just slightly above what we need. And, you know, this kind of delivery train times, loading and unloading processes in between that, that kind of, you know, it means that we kind of need to be a little lower. The throughput, as it's called, isn't, I don't think, quite 400. So, as a result, we're going to have to take out the overclocking and all of these and probably just turn off one of the manufacturers, and that pretty much solves the problem, I think. Um, because that's been putting most, the most, the fifth manufacturer is just a little bit too much. But that means we're still making 10 circuit boards per minute. So it's not too bad. But it's just kind of good, because in future it means that... Um, you know, once we get a few more more raw materials, as long as we can deliver it here, we can then power on that fifth manufacturer, or we can add on more manufacturers and not much else has to change. This kind of building has all the logistics in place now to be able to just feed down these resources fairly easily between all the machines. So now if we have a quick look, we're making 12... Well, let's just go into our control room in here. And we can look at manufacturer E and just turn that off and leave that off for now. So, just really quickly, if we check our numbers again, just to see how they're working out now. Now we need 45 times 4. So, 45 times 4. So, that's 180 plastic. And then we just check exactly how much they need over here now that they're underclocked, or not underclocked, but back to the normal rate. Uh, 12 and a half. So, 
That's going to be 45 times 4 plus 12 and a half times 12. That's 330. So we just saved ourselves by turning off a manufacturer and taking away the overclocking. The plastic required for here is only 330. So that leaves us an excess of 70 plastic that we're making. We're actually making a little bit more plastic than that as well in another refinery, but that's the kind of main new plastic refinement production that we have going on in that expansion of the building over there. Hopefully everyone's kind of keeping up because I know the episodes are fairly spaced apart now, but hopefully you're able to keep track of what I've been building previously. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing done. I don't think Circuit City is going to slow down now. It should be okay, and we can see that Manufacturer E is offline. We've got a little red light next to it, so that's looking good. And if we just head over here, I just have this box taking away the computers and going into here, the storage containers. So the only thing I did really in between episodes with regards to this building was I just added the belts, and we can see the computers nicely just flowing out of there. Now, screws. Screws look like they're... Maybe a little bit low or something. They shouldn't be. I'll kind of keep an eye on why that is, maybe. But um, the screw factory is going to be making 900 per minute. This place is probably going to shut down temporarily while we're doing some different things. And I'll explain why as we're doing them. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be the first thing kind of done. Balance Circuit City. Let's tick it off. So it's... I call it balanced. I mean just let's not run it at a deficit. It means all the machines should be able to... That are powered on should be able to stay on. All right, so... Now we're going to take our little car here, our explorer, and head back down to the main kind of kind of um, area. I call it the main area. It's kind of where all my factories were when we initially started, right? So we're going to go back down roughly to the screw factory. In the previous episode, I had built docking stations here, three of them, and a manufacturer so we can load up different things. That's making modular engines right now. So let's see how it's doing. So I thought while I'm driving back, I've just mentioned the last episode, as some people might know, had issues on YouTube. And I'm not sure why, it was just a YouTube problem. I remember when I uploaded it, it said it was taking longer than usual to process. Uh, processing just means the video is going into, like, HD, you know? It's doing some copyright checks, all of that kind of thing. It's, it might place ads or whatever it's doing, right? It does all, of, all the different things that YouTube needs to do before the video can kind of be ready to go out to the public. And it usually takes, for an hour-long video, for me, it could take anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. It's pretty quick. For some reason, it was taking multiple hours. So, very unusual. It uploaded correctly. I didn't see anything wrong with the video file. Um, but when it uploaded, uh, when it eventually said processing complete, I noticed that it was like, yep, it's 1440p. <laughs> oh, God. It's 1440p over on um, PC. I even checked it on my TV beforehand. I always do that. I don't know why. It's just something I like to do. Put it on the TV and see that everything's all good. It's another way of kind of hearing the audio and just making sure I didn't mess anything up too crazily. I don't watch the whole thing, of course, because it's quite long. But I just kind of spool through, make sure everything looks fine, everything's okay. So, all that was good, and then I released the video. And then I got a bunch of comments saying like, oh, it's only in 360p, or I can't even watch it. So I have no idea really why that is, but apparently some people on mobile, and I checked my own phone, and it would it was only 360p on phones. So really weird, right? It's just something kind of out of my control. Now, unfortunately, I only noticed those comments maybe a few hours after it came out, so it already had several thousand views, about two or three thousand, I think, at the time. So I was like, oh man, do I re-upload it or what do I do? But conventional wisdom on YouTube is once you've, you know, I'd say most, I only get about six, seven, eight thousand views um, per video at the moment. Sometimes it goes up to 10 after a while. You don't really want to re-upload when you've already gotten about 3,000. Um, just because it can negatively impact how, because a lot of people are going to be like, well, I've already seen it. I don't need to watch this. And then they might not see the next one in their uh, um, in the recommendations or a sub feed or whatever so you always want to put a video out that people are going to watch not put stuff out that people don't watch that negatively impacts things and they might get, might not get shown things again which is why you should like and subscribe and comment on videos and YouTube will be like hey this person loves this we're definitely going to show them the next one or her anyways we're out here that's pretty much it that's all I wanted to mention about that so and apparently now it's all fixed by the way I didn't make any changes but I just looked at it today and it's in HD even on phones so Apologies for that. I was telling people at the time, like, I can't re-upload it. You're just going to have to skip it. Oh, nice. We already have the modular engines ready. We needed 500. We've got 504. Excellent. Perfect. All right, great. So that means we can now switch this to heavy modular frames. So before I do that, what we're going to have to do is build another storage container just somewhere here. And then we're going to have to go around and fish for 
Yeah, I've got an idea, actually. What I'll do is build an awesome sink, and we'll just drain these other containers. So we can empty them out, and then I can load them up with the new ingredients to make heavy modular frames here. We'll keep the overclockers in. They should be able to bang them out pretty quickly. So we've got a bunch of smart plating in here. So we're just going to cut the ties with this. Send this straight in there. Power this on. Okay, so we're just going to sink all of the crap that's left in these. Yeah, so there's like rubber in here. So the way we could do that nicely also is just grab a belt and feed it into that one. Turn this off. Or break it off, I guess. Is there anything in this one? There's... That's the rubber that's coming out. That's fine. And then there's nothing in that one because we just built it. And there's motors in that one. Okay. So with the motors... Just grab these. I don't know how we can get around to this nicely. I guess we just go like this. It's just all temporary. All this horrible stuff is temporary. So there we go. So now I'm just feeding one container with all of the other container stuff. And that's going into an awesome sink. So that's just to do that in the background while I'm going to go and pick up um, some encased beams. So over on the right... Well, actually, what I can do... I only just learned this in between episodes. But you can type in a recipe for something. So let's say we want to build heavy modular frames. And we can see the two different recipes here. This is the one I'm going to go with. So let's add it to our to-do list. I'll edit the to-do list. And then we can see heavy modular frame 1. So what I'll do is just type in 100 because that's actually what's required for adaptive control units. We need 100 heavy modular frames. I crafted 20 at the beginning of the episode, or just between episodes, uh, myself. But we want to obviously just make 100 in the background now, instead of me clicking that button for ages and getting so much of that stuff in the inventory together. There's so many screws that you need. Um, so, let's see. What we need for it is 500 modular frames, 1,500 steel pipes, 500 encased industrial beams, excuse me, and 10,000 screws. So let's go ahead and get those. Just bring them here, load them up into these different um, containers. Excuse me, and we should be good to leave this automated, semi-automated, in the background for a while. Now, what I'm going to do really quickly is our screws are flying off horribly into that train station platform up there, and that's the thing we're going to work on today and make that look a lot better. Um, not just look better, but also be more efficient for the future. So just going to run up to the top floor of this building. This is our new screw factory. And this is where we're storing our screws in here and in here. And I'm basically just going to sever the ties here. And do I have screws on me? I do. What I'll just do temporarily is just throw them in there. Pick this stuff up. Alright, cool. Uh, yeah, this stuff doesn't really matter. I guess I'll just... Up that there, pick that up. Alright, cool. This will make sense in a minute. This is just to get things moving. Alright, cool. So that's just going to store up. We need 10,000 screws. And we're making 900 a minute, so it shouldn't take too long to get them. Um, but I'll come back for this area later. What I'm going to do now is just build a truck, drive over there, and pick up the other things we need. So do I have what I need? I do. Good. I'll just load this thing with fuel. I have a real problem accessing sometimes the um, workbench. There we go. Alright, cool. Alright, we'll just drive over to our steel factory. It's just the one right in front of us, not too far to go. Loaded up with encased industrial beams and steel pipes, of which we make plenty here. To be honest, we could even take the automated wiring that we need. We need 750 for the adaptive control units later, so while I'm here, I might as well get them. Uh, we'll park this outside of the little manufacturing temporary little area I have. Now, the reason I want to do this is just because I'm going to be building, and while I'm building, I might as well be progressing, right? So even though it's not building a factory to do it, we're still going to be progressing towards um, getting the next tier done. So might as well do it in the background if we can, rather than, you know, two birds with one stone, kind of. It only takes a little bit of time up front to do it. So what do we need? We needed 500. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's take just a little bit extra. Load that up into the back here. Well, actually, let's just go inside. So what else do we need? 1,500 steel pipes. It's 4,800 here, so... I love this, because it just shows you exactly, like, how much you're getting. And then there's automated wiring down here. I'll just grab all of that. So what do we need? 750. It's actually quite a lot, because there are only stacks of 50. Okay. Yeah, I don't need any extra of that, because I'm not going to be using it. 
All right, cool. Got everything we need. So now we can just leave and drive over to the other place and let the truck do the work of loading and unloading these things into their respective... Am I crazy or is it? Is this not supposed to be it? Just that little box there. And it just says drive truck. There's probably another hotkey or something I'm not aware of, right? Just to access the inventory? I can't seem to get it. <laughs> Let me just straighten the truck out and then go to the back of it. The Explorer one is pretty straightforward and easy to do. There we go, it's right at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, just drop all of this stuff in, that's fine. Pick up my boxes again. And away we go. Anyway, yeah, so the idea with this train station is it looks really bad, not just visually, but it's not the most efficient in terms of the way things are getting up there. So I want to make a truck slash train depot where we'll have truck stations all below that feed up to the train above. And it should be easy to expand. That's the ho my hope anyway with it. Um, so just before I load this any further, again, sorry about all the box making, but just kind of have to do it when I have such a chaotic in inventory. So I'm just going to take... Don't need to... Actually, I do need those, and maybe these. So, the industrial beams, because there's not that many of them, I'll put them into this box. Oh, no. No! <laughs> At least I brought too many. I forgot, it's still unloading. It's this one, not that one. This one. Yeah, so this isn't connected to anything. Let's put that there. Alright, so this box will eventually just connect up to that. Don't need to do that just right now. This one is now empty as well, so let's just cut this away. Good. So we're just emptying out the last little bit there. There's still some smart plating in that one. Okay, so actually, because we have uh, industrial encased beams with us, I'll just take 100 really quickly. Feed that in there. Feed that in there. Give these back. No big deal. Uh, actually, I do need a tiny bit more. So this truck station will feed into that. That's not going to feed into a truck station. We've already loaded it. This truck station can feed into that one. And vice versa. Okay, that's gone. So that's emptied out now. So now we can actually unload our trucks. So what's in the truck right now? There is 1800 steel pipe. So it doesn't matter which one we go to. We'll just go to the one on the left, I guess, first. Alright, so that's going to take the steel pipes, all 1800 of them, very quickly, shove them into this thing, shove them into there. Let's just turn on now, change the recipe to heavy modular frame. So the last thing we have, and there we go, we're feeding them in. Now, I should have just picked up that extra stuff, yeah. So just while this is like my sort of bin, and I'll put the encased beams back in here. And that should still be enough, I think. Alright, cool. So a bit messy, I know. Can I build another one of these? No, I need plates and rods. Plates and rods. So I'll just leave these here temporarily because that's not going to be till later. And we can take everything else back. Cool. Alrighty. So the last thing is to go over just over there and pick up the modular frames and then the screws. So modular frames is a real quick one. The screws is going to require loading this bad boy up at 10,000. So it's quite a lot. And we'll just run up to the top of that factory to do it. And that's us making heavy modular frames in the background. Once we've made our 100, we switch it to adaptive control units. And once we've made 100 of those, then we're able to progress to the next tier. Simple as. So again, boxes. Okay. So we needed... We needed 500, and we had 522 here. Nice. Just about got it. Alright, that's loaded up. Give me my stuff back. Alright, we'll just drive back, load this for the second last time, and then drive up to our factory and pick up those screws. Okay. That's the modular frames deposited. Just to make sure that worked okay. Yep, there we go. So let's just hook that up as well. Is there anything left in this one? That's now empty. So we got rid of all that stuff as well, which is nice. Just get rid of that now. 
Cool. All right, it's just the screws. I dropped the screw in the tuna. If you know what that's from, I like to think you're a 90s kid, I guess. All right, so just to make this easy, I'll probably just load up my inventory with as much as possible, jump down, then throw it into the truck, because I'm not going to build a station for this, even though there is quite a lot of material. Uh, so I'm just going to, again, boxes galore. Still have, yeah, let's just pick up the, um, I need actual jetpack fuel. Just take that with me. Really want to double up this factory now because we're, we're going to need a lot more screws. Like the screws, I'm taking them away from the Circuit City basically now by cutting that uh, connection. So we can easily just double up this factory. There's no real problem in doing that. It's going to just mirror the other side and then we'd be making 1800 screws per minute. Which is a pretty good amount, but again, we can always do more and do better. But for the stage that I'm at in the game, I think it's as good as it gets. How much is in here? 6,400. So there was one, two, there's only two and a half thousand in that one, really. So we have about 8,800. So not quite everything I need, but pretty much, well, we should be able to make most things. I might have to make a little trip a little later on to do, to finish that off. Not too concerning, though. All right, that's loaded up. All right, last trip. Then I'll get rid of some of those recipes off the right side of my screen. We won't need them anymore. I actually have some heavy modular frames as well, which is good. From when I made them last episode. Alright. Man, the load and unload rate of these things are so fast when you think about it. Like, that was just 6, 7,000 just straight away. 8,000. Okay, and in it goes. So now, if this is still powered on... Yes, there we go. We're making heavy modular frames. So at 5 per minute, and we need 100, that's going to be 20 minutes until we get our 100, and we have to change this. So I might just set myself a little timer just to remember to come back here. That'd be kind of a cool feature to have in-game. Not that you ever really need it, but I'll set a little timer, and I'll come back then when we need to. So now, we can just mark that off the list. That is switching to heavy modular frames. A little bit of a manual kind of thing I had to do there, but not, not that big of a deal. So now we're going to get to the main meat and potatoes of the episode, building the large truck and train station. I'm just going to also remove, um, holding shift left click to remove the recipes on the right side of the screen, just to make the UI a little cleaner. There we go. So balance circuit city, switch on heavy modular frames, and now we're building our large truck and train station. So don't really need that anymore. anymore. We'll just leave it here. This has all the stuff in it we need. So we've got loads of concrete in here and also silica. I went and picked up some silica from this factory up here. That's where we're making silica. We made that a long time ago. Still haven't explored like 90% of the map, but I have big plans for this area up here. I was having a good look around uh, and I'm aware of certain things in the middle of the map from having a look around as well. So, um... Oh my god, yeah, whoops. I forgot that's what that box was doing. I just saw it there and thought, get rid of it. Sorry for that. Let's just store that stuff. Just pick this stuff up and just put that back in there. Sorry. There we go. Is that better? So that should be 750, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 50. Yep. Great. All right, let's go. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the plan in the future really is that once we hit this milestone and get to the next tier with the space elevator, my plan from then on out is really to build a massive smeltery with super long trains. Well, I, you know, I, <laughs> there's always something that's going to make things bigger, better, longer. So when I say super long, I mean compared to everything I've built. There was a comment saying like, oh man, you said that it was a big factory, but nothing you've built so far is big, really. And it's like, yeah, I guess, but like, it, they're big for me, you know? I'm, I'm following the progression of the game. I don't really look outside of the game too much. Um, you know, I see what other people build. They build incredible things, but... I, don't, I actually don't look at, like, mega build projects very often. I kind of look at aesthetic builds more, more than anything. Um, but for me, this is the biggest project I've done. So following the natural progression of the game, if you're following it too, along with me... These are big projects, you know, and you just got to take it that way. No, like I haven't seen what's in tier seven and eight, especially eight. I haven't seen anything in tier eight. 
So I don't know the volume of goods I'm going to need. I, I'm aware, though, everyone says you're going to be tapping, like, many, many deposits to get, like, just, like, the items required to make, like, the simplest thing. So I, I get it. But, you know, I'm still allowed to say it's a big factory if it's big for me. But once we get to proper endgame stuff, then I guess we could say now we're building huge factories, eh? <laughs> Giga factories. All right, so we're up at this train station. So basically... I want to do this in phases to do this properly, so I'm just going to only really focus on concrete to start off with. So I might empty out my inventory, get it with just concrete, and build a sort of framework and structure for this place, and then get rid of these pillars and things. So that's what I'm going to do now. I don't know how much of this stuff I'm going to be cutting out, but I guess I'll try to cut out as much mundane stuff as possible. Um, but really quickly, I'm just going to get back up here. Sorry for hopping around so much. I get distracted when I'm talking. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to build these personal boxes again. Get rid of some stuff I don't need. And talk about the plan here. So that's fine. Let's just pick up... The concrete's left in the car, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll run down to the car in a minute. But um, yeah, the plan is going to be to start with a platform that's just one... Hmm. I think one foundation further down. No, actually, this foundation here should be good. And we'll build with that in mind. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let me just head down to the car. I'm going to get the concrete... And I'll come back up and start deleting things. Alrighty, so I basically just cut away all of the conveyor belts and the pillars and everything that kind of leads over towards that station platform over there from the screw factory. So I'm on the fourth floor here. This is where we make our screws. I'm basically going to use this as the height for the road. So this is going to be asphalt. I guess I'll just use the material asphalt like this. And this is going to be a road. People have told me you should go with three across rather than two at the very least. So we'll do three. I think that makes sense. Uh, I'm basically just going to zoop it all the way out this way. And this is where trucks are going to come by, right? So this screw factory is going to have a truck station built into the upper floor. There is one on the bottom floor that drops off stuff. This will be an upper floor one that picks up the screws and then will deliver it over to the station. And from here, this will be a point where, hopefully, it's need if it's needed in multiple recipes, uh, multiple trains can come by and pick that up. So, um... Yeah, this is a pretty good height to work with because it actually leaves quite a lot of headroom in there to make it look a bit somewhat half decent. Now, I actually experimented in between episodes with building curved roads, like curving this around and under there. And while you can do curved roads, it's it's a pain in the ass to do. Um, pardon my French. But you can do it two ways. You can use little barriers to just like curve it this way, this way, this way, and just keep doing that every time you push out a foundation. So it just like slowly curves around. But it can look a little finicky. There's another way of doing it as well that I've seen online where... People build out like this. So you build a, um, a road barrier like here. Let's say like that. Something like this. And then I think you just connect a foundation here. So just cut this for a second. And then build it all the way out. And if you make these like small little connections, you can kind of get this like spiral effect going on. And then you cut away all of this. And you're left with, at the very end, a kind of a more seamless curve. Kind of. Um... I did experiment with it, I just don't think, until curves are naturally put in the game, or if you want to mod it, that's fine. I don't think I'm going to use curves, I'm going to use kind of hard right angles. Or at the very least, like now, I'm going to use these ones, 45 degree angles. So it's going to do this sort of strange looking little sharp turn, I guess, and turn into things. But it'll keep things looking, or it makes patterns on the road look a little nicer and things like that. So that's, that's mainly why I want to do it. But I just wanted to let people know that I did think about it, I did play around with it. I'll throw up a screenshot of actually what I built. And I'm sure like people might think it looks better, but making a truck go around it and trying to put patterns on the road, I just feel like it gets messy really quickly for very little gain. Um, so yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna build this straight out somewhere like here. So this should be now parallel to this. Yeah, good. All right, cool. Oh man, that looks awesome. The little sun rising there. Okay, cool. So this is where our road's gonna come in.
Okay, cool. So, next up is going to be designing our first sort of actual truck stop, like where the first one's going to be. So do I have what I need for it, actually? I don't think I do. I think I probably left the stuff in the car. All right, so I'm just going to run downstairs, grab the materials needed to make our trucks, uh, truck stations, I should say, and then we're going to put in like three, four, five, or, or whatever, and start laying them out that way. All right, so I just had a quick run over to our old factory there where I picked up some modular frames. Of course, I'm really low on them now because we had just thrown 550 into the manufacturer that's making heavy modular frames. But while I was over there, I walked past here, which is the third floor of the screw factory. It had this old runway where I had two truck stations, or I think I, yeah, I can't remember exactly. I think it was two truck stations where I was picking up screws. So I might put the old truck stations back and just feed this road out and up to the left onto our little highway here. Um, just thought I would mention that. It would be pretty seamless to kind of reinstate it the way it used to be. I need to work on the signals up there because that's ugh, that train stops while the other train is in there and they don't really need to do that. Anyways, to continue on with this build, I'm going to make ourselves a an awesome shop and we're going to get some of the new foundations for the quarter pipe packs, the half foundations, the corner ramps. Just going to get all this stuff. Why not? Quarter pipes, definitely. Quarter pipe extensions and half foundations. I'll get that double ramp set as well that people wanted me to get f before. I'll save the rest just in case I want to get something else in future. But let's just buy these. And the reason I want to get these is because they're actually pretty good for helping trucks. If we just go to the foundations panel. So we can see we've got half foundations now, which are exactly like what you think they would be. If we just build one, we can see that on one side it looks like the regular concrete foundation. On the other side it looks like the bottom of it. So it's kind of an interesting... You can get a blank concrete wall this way if you wanted to. I um, mean, you could have done that before, I suppose, with the regular foundation, but you can half it now if you wanted to. I've also got the double ramps. That's what people told me to build before instead of, like, building on the bottom of it like I was doing before. I was using, I was trying to use an inverted ramp and a regular ramp to kind of make that, but you just can just get it straight up. But the things I'm really excited about are these. The quarter pipes and the inverted pipes and all of this stuff. This is because... For trucks, they can often get stuck on things. Now, when you're not looking at them, not really. They tend to just do what they're supposed to do. But otherwise, they... Why can't I um, put this down somewhere? There we go. That's all I wanted to do. Anyway, the nice thing is, like, it's a nice smooth ramp. So they're not going to really get stuck on stuff too much. So what I'm going to do is find the... This one. Yes. And we want to build this very carefully now. So one, two, three, four, and five, I think. Something like here, and then another one next to it. We'll color this asphalt, or make it asphalt, I should say. So now if a truck is driving by and it needs to pull in to the left, it has a nice smooth kind of ramp to kind of use to get in there. Yeah, cool. All right, that's the perfect distance. So I need to just get, speaking of distance, get some distance back on it and see where we're going to start this. So we'll start here. We'll come in. And I guess right here is where we'll start. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab the quarter pipe, rotate it around, build two across, get our first one of these, attach it on. We're going to leave a gap of one, two, and have that just there. Perfect. And have that come out. So hopefully it's kind of coming together. The idea behind this, at least for me, is that a truck, if I am a truck <laughs> and I'm driving in here and I need to turn, I can just like kind of smoothly hit into this and not really like get stuck or flip or any problems or anything like that. It should just smoothly come in there, hopefully, and the truck station will be in the middle. So let's get that truck station down now. So something like this. We want it to be between the two foundations and about if the half point of a foundation is there, we want it to be tucked in one. So I was looking at the edge of the blueprint, by the way, there. So I was looking at the, this port part of the um, thing right here. Yeah, so actually we can see it right now, right? So that line, it's not in the center. It's one back. And there's a good reason for that. It's because I want this to jut out over this just a little bit so we can still feed it in from behind. But we can build a wall here so that we don't necessarily kind of see it. Um, so also what we could do is get another one of these. Put it right there. And then what we can do is use the half foundations to be stacked on top. Now, these could be concrete, I think. 
Let's do regular concrete. Coated concrete might actually be kind of cool. Let's just have a look at it. Oh, I don't have the plastic I need. Well, I'll just make a concrete then for now, and maybe I could dress it up later when I get the plastic. Um, so we'll just rotate it around. No, it doesn't seem to want to fit properly. Just stand up here. So which side? Are, yeah, I don't want. I don't really like that look. By the way, that square in the center of the concrete. It's fine on the ground, but on the wall it would be a bit weird. So I'm just going to rotate it this way. And just put it down like that. So then it's just this like concrete wall. Okay, and we'll do vertical. Go up pretty much as high as we can. Alrighty, something like that. So then, the next piece we need, piece of the puzzle, will be the outer corner extension 4. And we'll just make that concrete as well. Cool. Now what I'll probably do with this is make it steel to make it look a bit different. But this is just to get everything down and in place first. Just to block it out, as it were, so you can see what I'm going for. Now we're not necessarily going to go up this high. I'll put a roof on it probably before that. But this is the idea. Alright, let's get walls now. So, basic wall. Alright, let's see what that looks like. Okay, and let's just match it on the other side so we can get a better feel for this. And then I'll color it a bit different. Or I say color, I'll put different materials on it. Damn, I keep doing the wrong thing. Default, there we go. Oh, satisfactory. Why do you do this to me? Alright, nice. And then the rest of the concrete. I'll have to go pick up some steel because I don't think I have any with me. And the timer went off, by the way, so our heavy modular frames should be basically done. Alright, let's just get some distance, have a look at that. So that's kind of the idea, right? Just the smooth curve in and out. And then we have three lanes here, right? So this, this, and this is the main road. And then trucks that are turning have a, a whole lane to kind of come in and guide in to this spot, which basically extends all the way out here. So even if they're just like here, they'll get their package and then they'll keep going. And we're going to do this every two blocks. I don't know why I've decided that. It could be every one block, I suppose, but I just think two gives enough space to let trucks get back onto the, the path they need to. Now, I don't know if this is going to really work, like if they're going to bump into each other and mess things up. I'm hoping not. It should be okay. Seems like a lot of room for recovery if they do kind of bump into each other a bit. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. We're just going to put another one down like here. Same sort of thing as we go out and out and out. Let me just see, do I have any steel in my inventory? No. Alright, I'm just going to run over, grab some steel, come back over here and show you then almost the sort of finished look of what I have in mind for how this is going to look. Alright, so I'm back. I've got some steel with me, so I should be able to complete what I want to do here. So, um, let's have a look. So basically with walls, I'm going to get a basic wall of steel, just like this, and boop it right there. We're going to do the same somewhere about here. Uh, just to keep things even on the other side, just to complete the look. There we go. So we have a little bit of steel in place. Then what we're going to do is go with Grip metal foundations. Something like that for steel pillars. Just gonna get, get rid of this bit, it's not needed. Alright, starting to take a little bit of shape, get a little bit of character. But there's more to come. Let's go like this. Don't know if that's gonna look a bit too weird. Maybe. And then we just go concrete wall there. What I did actually think of doing as well was putting a little doorway here. I thought it looked really cool, but it means shifting this over. That's kind of like off-center then. I don't know. It's a bit weird. Uh, like this will be a bit embedded into the thing. Let me just try it though again. 
And if you guys really think that looks better, maybe maybe I'll change it. Why can't I do this? Oh, it's because I'm not in materials. There we go. Let's do that. Uh, the other thing would be... Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's just fill in the wall properly first. So something like that. The other idea then would be to get the uh, foundation... Not the foundation, sorry, the frame wall and stick them in here. So you can have it sinking into the wall or kind of jutting out a bit. I want it jutting out. And that way it kind of looks like it's supporting things. There we go. Something like that. So let me get this. Alright, cool. It's looking a little bit better now. A little bit more character to it. Um, so the plan for this part of the wall is actually to put, like, a big TV on it. Actually, that's something else I have to get in the awesome shop. I don't know if I've ever gotten it before. Customizer, is it? Uh, no, it's organization, I think. Um, can't quite remember where it is. Let's just go architecture. Oh, sorry, organization's there. There we go. Oh, I have it. I did get it. Oh, cool. I just don't think I've ever made one. I don't think I have what I need to make them, actually. I need some copper sheeting. Oh, I actually have that. Just over in the other place. But yeah, the idea is going to be not to put that one, it's huge. But that one right there. As, like, what's coming into the truck station. And then maybe, like, um, one or two or three or four or whatever. A few little square ones on the left. Um, but yeah, let's just try put this truck station down again. Really quickly. And see, like, would this be better served if it was just leaving a little space? I suppose the easiest way to see this actually, is to do something like this. Get the walls, get the door wall, turn it that way. So we'd have to have room for that door. Or I could cut this away and have a door on the right side, which is what I initially kind of thought might look cool, but then it kind of messes with like the whole ramp. You'll just have like a ramp kind of jutting out if you've got just like a solid wall coming down here. So it's like, yes, I could have a door right there. It'd be kind of cool. It's like a little service door next to the truck station, but then the ramp doesn't really kind of make sense in that place. Um, so I'll put that back. I just wanted to talk through some of the ideas, you know, I had there about this stuff. So it would look like that, and then the truck station. I never actually tried this, though. Yeah, it's not going to work, really. I mean, I can put it on the ground first, so it sinks in like that. So don't worry about it being raised. I'm just trying to think about how far over to the right it would be. Yeah, I just don't... I don't know. I don't like it. Plus, I don't think I'll ever really need the door there. I'm just trying to make it look more like an actual factory wood. I feel like you would have... Like, I'll have access to it at the back. So don't... Don't be worried about that. Um, okay, so trade truck station again. Just put that back where it should be. Which is between these two spots. And then we just push it back to the halfway point, which is there. And then one more. Oh, I was way too far out. Whoops. Cool. Alright. It's back. Um, so, the other thing I also thought that would be kind of cool was using glass hex frame windows I actually think they look better than the foundation things or the um whatever they're called but the problem is they clip when you get really far away if you go far away they actually look fine even here but I noticed if you go really far away and you look you start to see this like flickering I know I'm really picky but I just can't handle that so <laughs> um, it's a tiny thing but they look so good it looks like really good supports but unfortunately that flickering means it's a no-show no-go for me all right, anyway, so I'm happy with that. Happy with that. That's where our station is. So what we could do, I also picked up some colors. Yeah, some patterns, I should say. So let's go. This would be like zero and one. Something like that as one of the loading bays. And we could have some like arrows creeping in and some dotted lines around it or something. Just trying to think, do I need anything there? I guess more of these would make sense. Yep, and then we could just color it, I don't know, just color it black, probably, mostly. So that's the idea, but I have to put a roof on it still, so still got to work on that. Um, now, on the other side, the plan is to have 
really nice looking windows, hopefully, the whole way up. So the idea was just these windows that go all the way up. That's why I picked up that silica. And then we'll put the roof on top of it. So then another thing would be the road barrier here. This is just concrete again, starting around here, souping it, souping it all the way out, and then we can put the railing above it. Alrighty, so there we go. So we've got a wall of five, I think. Full frame windows, just all the way down. Maybe now and then I'll make some little pillars or something, but for now I like it just being a giant window on this side. And then, you know, further out as you approach, you just have this like nice clear glass paneling on the way in. That little bottom bit that sticks over the edge, I was thinking of running a steel, bu uh, steel beam all along the side of it. Um, I don't know if I could do that right now and just see what that would look like. Yeah, something like that maybe. You could even double it up. It seems to be starting at a point where it's like not exactly where I'd want it to be. I guess you could do something like this and then just another one under it. Would that look weird? Inside it would look fine. It would just look like... looks really good inside. But outside it's like, yeah, there's a double thing going. Hmm. I'll think about it. Um... Not too sure 100% on that yet, just to kind of clean that up and make it look a bit more natural, but it's just because of the raised platform. I'm, I'm adamant about keeping the raised platform. I just like it. I'll need to figure out some sort of stairwell that goes upstairs or downstairs as well on this side. So I haven't done that either yet. So that's just another one of those things, but... Let me think about it. <laughs> Alright, so... We've got this in place. This is like our first one, and there's going to be like four or five of these. So every two junctions, so like this, we just have another thing here. And then basically just copy these, and this will go up. Just like that, right? No big deal. So that's the idea, is just copy and paste that basically over and over. Which you could copy and paste it, but you can't. But for now, what we'll do is put the roof on. Holy shit, he's coming straight for the windows! Jesus Christ! <laughs> Alright. Um, flat roof. Start flat roof on this side, tilting the thickest part out to the outside. Go all the way down that way. It's just rotated itself because of course it has. The game wants me to fail. But I'm literally too good. Alright, let's just do that. Good, so that's the first part of the roof. Stage one. Stage two, bend it. Thickest part facing the outside as well. That's a four meter tilted roof that we picked up a while ago in the awesome shop. Totally fine. Let's get the flat part. Do it three times over now in the center. At least three, maybe four actually. Yeah, is it three or four actually? I'm not too sure. If it's four, we can rotate. Might look a little nicer that way then. Yeah. Then we get the curved one again. Unfortunately, curved roofs don't let you tilt them down. So I'll have to just start from the other side. Starting from this side, not from the half foundation. That messes everything up. Start from this side. There we go. Once one's down, it's okay. So, if we have a look at that, it leaves this little kind of gap bit up here. So we could just extend the, the roof up a bit, or I could just leave it. I mean, it doesn't really feel like it's terribly 
noticeable. I don't think it's really a problem. I'll just leave it for now. Maybe you could just extend this up further, right? The wall up further. That might look a bit weird, or the concrete bit on the inside could just go up the floor. Um, let's just see what that would look like really quickly, if I can just somehow fly up there just a bit. Uh. All right, I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, not a fan of that. I'll probably just leave it. I don't really mind. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the way it's going to be the whole way around. So let's just extend it down. I thought about basically bringing it in from this point, but it's it makes things a bit off. The plan here is to have ceiling lights either side, and they're so big that they need... If you want to have one on this side, you need one on that side. Now, I could just have the one... If I was to cut this, and this was to come further, like from here... You could just fit one, I suppose, down the middle. But I like the idea of having two, so... It's just, that's the reason for that. But, you know, always open to a little bit of experimentation. But for now, this seems to be the way I'm, I'm happy to do it. So let's keep that moving out that way. So let's just get the flat ones now to go in between. They should auto-rotate based on the one you look at. So no more worrying about that. Now, I actually ran over as well to the screw factory and picked up some of the copper sheeting. So we should be able to even put in the little billboards just to see what they look like. This is what we got so far. So we have this sort of little tunnel thing going on. Looks kind of cool. A little different. So, here we are. Organization. Small billboard. It's called small, but it's actually pretty huge. The large one would actually fit right there, but I, I wouldn't even know what to put on it, to be honest. <laughs> so... Um, if you have ideas, maybe we could put that there instead. Every two gaps or whatever. So something like right there. And then I get another one, the squares. Oh, I don't have one I need for a square. Reinforced plates and I do have that. It's just over there, so I'll just leave it. But you get the idea. A couple of square ones would go in there. Shenanigans. Again, don't know what this will say, but it'll be like, you know, screws deposit or something. Maybe the amount that's coming in here per minute that, sh that I know should be coming in here per minute. Uh, that'd be kind of good to actually just keep track of everything that comes here. And then every time I add a new station to the truck stop, I can then update the number. Um, yeah, so is that pretty much it? I guess then there's just this bit here. There's that bit there. And that's it. So that is our standard truck stop, right? That's one truck stop on this whole route. So just really quickly, let's just get the patterns. Let's maybe get the dotted line. Center dotted line. It's going to be going this way. Straight down that way. And that's where we, the rubber meets the road, quite literally. We'll have to figure out how that's going to look. In fact, this will probably be a T-junction, because it's going to be a road that goes out this way to collect from um, the quick wire and the cable. So probably like a collection station there that comes up from both of these places, drives up, gets up onto the road, and then deposits it in its appropriate station. All right, let's just finish this bit off here. I'll have to figure out a walkway. That probably will go underneath, not above, actually. Underneath, yeah, that would make more sense because we are raised up pretty high here. There's definitely room below us to do different things as well. All right, cool. So yeah, lights. That would be the next thing. So there's going to be a ceiling light like here and another one there. And that's just going to pile along that way. So what I'm going to do... Yeah, what I'm going to do right now is basically... Now that you've seen how one of these is built, just build the other ones. But also, actually, maybe before I just do that, we need the walkway around the back, right? That's why we've got all this room around the back. That's where we can see this stuff. And that's going to join up. That's our lift taking the screws or... Well, that's actually taking cable. The one for screws... Where the hell is that one? There? Yeah. Okay, so I can always just adjust the train station a little bit upstairs if you want these to kind of feed straight up, or they could go into a centralized box or something. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that just yet. For now, we could just clip these. Go all the way down that way. And then build stairwells either side and kind of work out some of the stuff. Maybe storage below or above. Yeah, not too sure. 
Okay, well either way, it doesn't really matter. This will kind of be mostly hidden. This is going to be like the back room walkway, which is why I was saying we could have a little exit that leads out there. Uh, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is just add on... Actually, before I add on more, I'm going to make a run now. We, we need to switch to ACUs. So build a large truck and train station. We can kind of say that that's... It's not done done, but you've seen how it's done, and now it's going to be done behind the scenes, the rest of it, um, before I then clean up the rest. The, ne the next bit of, the next stages of this will be done in a future episode. I haven't decided yet exactly how this is going to finish off, being how it's going to finish off looking. Um, we, of course, have a railway running right above it, and we're just going a little shy underneath that. So maybe then another roof that comes out this way or something could attach. Make it look a little cleaner or something. I'm not too sure. I don't mind it just the way it is. We could just leave it that way. But it would look nice to have a few supports or something from this stick into the building below it. Um, but otherwise, I do like the look of the, the glass side. The glass paneling. Looks good. Yeah, so what I want to do now is, I'm guessing, we'll have a... We'll just go right around to it right now. Oh, I just realized something. I'm just going to pick up some screws. I've got a little bit, but might need just a tiny bit more. Pick up some screws, bring it to the manufacturer. That way we can make the rest of the heavy modular frames. We were a little short when I initially did it. Okay. See how many heavy modular frames we've made and then switch it to adaptive control units. And that's the final components for the next tier. We made 88, so pretty good, but not perfect. So let's just dump the screws. Give me 500, please. And that'll make the rest of them. So for adaptive control units, let's have a look. And let's add, we need 100 for the space elevator. So adaptive control is two. Let's go all the way up to 100. So we need 750 automated wiring, which we have here. We need 500 circuit boards, which I can go and get. I have 100 computers on me. So it's just the circuit boards is the only thing I don't have with me. So yeah, I'll just drive up to Circuit City, or maybe take the train, actually, thinking about it. Maybe just take a train, get to Circuit City, uh, pick up some circuit boards and bring them back. We need just 500. Got the room in my inventory for that, no problem. So I'll just do that and pick up in a sec. Alrighty, I have picked up the circuit boards. Picked up way more than I need, actually. I've got 1,200 on me. So we're just going to run over, grab these heavy modular frames, and reorganize the boxes so we can start making adaptive control units. Then we'll head back up here and finish off making the... I guess, what do we call that? Like, just truck slash train station? Logistics station? Uh, yep, we've got 100. Boom. Let's take them in. Alright, and then the automated wiring is just in a box somewhere else, so... I guess what I'll do is I'll just pick these things up. We'll just remove these belts. Pick this up as well. And then we'll just put down the belts again fresh, now that they're, like, empty. That's empty as well. And still lots of screws in here. I don't know how... Did I... I must have dropped too, too many in here? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Because I ran back, didn't I? Okay, so... Let's go... Recipe... Adaptive control units, finally. Here we go. Space elevator stuff. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so it's been a long time coming. So circuit boards. Let's just... Well, it'd be nice to put in the actual appropriate amount. So we needed 500. There we go. So that's 500 circuit boards. Heavy modular frames needs 100. So it's 50. Another 50. Computers needs 100 as well. And then automated wiring needed 750, of which there is 750 in this box. Can't pick it all up at once though, so let's just dump them in separately. And there we go. There we go. So that should be everything we need to make 100 adaptive control units. We've got 500 
modular engines, 519, and then I've got way more than I need versatile frameworks. So in the next episode, we'll launch the space elevator, probably near the beginning. Have a look through some of the stuff there, but ultimately I won't be actually progressing to those tiers for a little while. We're going to start getting all the materials together. So we're start going to start building much bigger factories because apparently for these tiers, we're just going to need like lots of stuff. So what I'm hoping and doing, like I said, is gathering like ore from probably like 20, at least 20 ore nodes early on or something. And um, using a station like this or building another station like this to like bring all the trucks together, bring all the, all the trucks will bring all the ore to a station and then the trains will travel that ore all the way up to, I'm hoping, this place, which is where I'm going to build a mass smeltery uh, in the next few episodes. Might take a while to do it. I have no idea how I'm planning to do it, but it shouldn't be too complicated. It's just smelting. And then we distribute that ore or we build other sort of factories to come off the sides of it and do different things um, and see what we need, really, at that point. All right, so I've got plenty of material in my inventory. I think I've got everything I need to just continue building these one after the other. So I'm just going to do that and just cut to when I've got like three, four of them done. The idea of having four would be we need quick wire cable screws and then one for at least loading and fueling the station, uh, the trucks themselves. So I need something to distribute fuel to these other truck stations. Um, so I'll have a, a route that takes, so we make turbo fuel up, whoops, all the way up here. So a truck will probably travel down and, and drop stuff off or a single train or something. I don't know. Um, either or, doesn't really matter. Maybe train, actually, because I'm sure multiple places you're going to need turbo fuel in the future. Um, oh, I don't think I picked up what I need to put the lights in, but... Oh, we need quick wire, actually, don't we? It's got loads of quick wire right here. It's flooding right past me, so that should be no problem. All right, I'll just get to work. So basically, just copy and paste these, pad them out uh, for as many as I can do. No harm having empty ones. Let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Five truck stations in a row, now complete with ceiling lights, some organizational billboards in the background, some tiled little signage as well, and the little road signs on the bottom. So we've got some cutoff points where you say, hey, don't be crossing over this if you can. Trucks are supposed to pull in into P1, P2, P3, etc., all the way down to the fifth one at the end. Um, this stuff is kind of temporary. Well, not temporary. It's like, if you have better ideas, absolutely let me know in the comments. Uh, I don't drive. I feel like a solid line means you're actually never supposed to cross over it. But in a factory setting, I don't know, it just kind of means like, yeah, this is separate, right? If you're on this side, you should be loading or unloading and then coming off. I don't know. Kind of. You let me know what you think it could be. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but I, th I think it looks kind of good either way, though, so far. I'm happy to leave it as is, but if you've got better ideas, then I'll try and implement them, too. So I've got the lights hooked up temporarily to this little light switch just here. Um, it's on night mode at the moment, so we can just toggle that off. We can kind of see what, what vibe I'm going for. So I moved the roof over by one. Well, kind of. If you remember, the glass windows here had a flat roof coming off of it. So now I've actually got the tilt right here, and then the four flat across, and then the tilt here. So that way I don't have that gap now above these different bits, so that looks a little bit better. Um, but at the same time now, the lights are kind of offset. They don't go down the center of the road. So what I could do is I could cut this bit of the platform, just cut the, all that bit of the platform off, put the dotted line along here, because of course you could use the pattern for... I suppose side dotted line. I hate the way this looks like an L because that's not what it is. But anyway, it's just a side. The it, the side corner is the L. Anyway, it's an L on coffee stains part. Am I right? All right. So anyway, something like that. So you could paint that all the way down the center and have this bit be cut off. And that way the lights would be in the center and it would leave even more room uh, for trucks to kind of navigate once they're in here. But the road on the outside is going to be a three lane. So it'd be a three lane that kind of cuts into a a four lane, if you want to call it that, you know, like a four tile width. Plus the fifth on the edge, plus the sixth if we count where they actually load and unload. But that's basically what we got. You know, let me know what you think. I, I think I might end up doing that. I'm, as I'm saying it, as I'm verbalizing it, it sounds like it makes sense. Uh, all right, so that's going to be it for building this for this episode. Obviously, more needs to come. I need to get around to the back now and basically hook up the screws going up. I need to cut this and make it look natural, look, make it look right. Uh, I want to put some pillars on the bottom. I think what I'm going to do for pillars, actually, instead of using the big square pillars, is do this. Da -da 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 -da. Foundations, the pipe ones. So we can make circular pillars now, which look awesome. So you can use the... I guess there's no half one, right? It's just the corner quarters. So you can do something like this down here. 
I just can I snap that in? Yes, we can. Snap it there. Vertical. Something like that. So on and so forth. You get the idea, right? So a little bit of effort putting them down, but it looks pretty good once it's down, I think, these circular pillars. Uh, there's an airport in Malaga in Spain that I've been to that have these pretty much to scale, actually, like this. You can't, there's no way you could, like, wrap your arms around it. It's huge, these huge pillars that lead up to, um, it actually just looks like a giant warehouse. It's actually not too dissimilar from what I have now, but that's, like, Malaga Airport, I think. I might be misremembering, but it kind of comes off that way. So if you look it up, you might be able to see something like this. It's kind of a brutalist looking thing where you have these giant pillars holding up a big concrete roof and then this vapid inside warehouse like thing where everyone lines up to get their, uh, to do their check in or whatever. Anyway, yeah, so having these supporting that. Now this might come down a bit another floor. Like I said, it might do something underneath, but supporting the road that leads into it and stuff could look really cool, I think. So I'll just leave that there for now. Let's just head over here really quickly and see what we got. In the box, I'm excited to see if we got our 100 adaptive control units or if I made a mistake. Oh my god, there it is, 100, perfect. Um, yeah, let's just pick them up. I'll drop them on the ground. haven't looked at them, actually. Just wait for the autosave. Alrighty. Bump. And there we go. Pretty much looks as you'd expect. We have a little circuitry in there. That's the circuit boards, I guess. The heavy modular frames giving it its structural integrity and so on. What else was used to make it? I can't even remember. <laughs> of course, the computering and then the automated wiring, yeah. Adaptive control unit. There she is. Alrighty, so uh, yeah, that means I've got everything I need for the space elevator. So in the next episode, we'll ship it all up, basically. I'll just set up something like this again. Three boxes leading into the thing. We'll watch it all flood in. I got a build it somewhere. We used to actually have it where that um, screw factory is. I gotta build it somewhere. Some people do really cool builds actually where they build like entire factories around it just for almost the aesthetics. They're not even using it really but just have a big giant structure in the center. It can look quite cool. Alright. So that's gonna be it for this episode. Hope people enjoyed it. A lot more building heavy uh, and then kind of a little bit of busy work just progressing in the background. But I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. I think this thing looks good. Especially when you get a bit closer and you can see inside the lights are on. The trains going up above and then we'll get the trucks flowing. We've got something like 24,000 screws are backed up here now that we need to get the truck station working, get them like delivering things in and out. So we'll do that in the next episode. All right, that's going to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.